so I have here with me Senator Eileen Flynn, uh, and I'm delighted to speak with Eileen today. Uh, I think a lot of people would uh, have seen Eileen before, would know Eileen. Um, she is a uh, an activist. She grew up in on the halting site in Labrador Park in Valley Fermat. Uh, she's a member of the traveling community and she's the first member of the traveling community to uh, become a senator. Uh, in Ireland, she stood for the Labour panel uh, in the senator is the Shannon elections earlier this year and narrowly missed out uh, on a seat uh, through that and was then nominated uh, as one of the Taoiseach's nominations for the Senate. So uh, Eileen, first of all, I'll ask you, now that there's been, a, it's gone a few months uh, as a Senator, how do you find uh, your role as a Senator uh, and what it's been like over the last few months? In, uh, in, in these uh, times, uh, uh, in one part of me, I'm actually, I know this is going to sound nasty, I'm glad of some of the restrictions of the, the, the traveling and stuff, but there's been such, uh, how would you say it? such a high acts from one person you know around going uh, doing talks and uh, at other organizations around um uh, uh, going to uh, different counties to launch stuff and which is all really good you know but i'm i'm in here to uh, complete pieces of work that i'm passionate about and to start off some of those uh, pieces of work like a uh, hate crime legislation like getting the traveler culture um, and history education bill over the line uh, getting uh, the minister for education to support that bill also uh, you know uh, some stuff that's uh, to hold the government to account around um, saying the end direct provision that they will um, put in an action plan for traveller mental mm -hmm. health. My opinion, there's no will from the government to end direct provision because if they did, they would have a timeline when they're going to end it. It was set up over 20 years ago. It was meant to be um, temporary. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. It's it's now for profit. And as all, all of your viewers would already know that, you know. So uh, again, it's really about holding them to account and uh, trying to work with uh, people who's living in direct provision to uh, see how, how can we bring around this change faster and then as, as well as that, I'm working with the National Traveller Mental Health Network to uh, bring in um, a, in the program of government, they say that they have a plan, an action plan around traveller mental health. And again, that evidence is not there for me after sitting around tables is, is the will, the political will to do that is not there. So it's around really challenging that, getting champions from what inside the House of the Arachnids to support um, uh, those two, in my opinion, big priorities that's and the government, uh, um, the government's programme. And uh, I just hope it doesn't take four years to do or that it falls through the loop. So there are only pieces of the work that I've started to, uh, to start and, and it's in, in the last positive last five uh, five months that I've been here, you know, and so it's been yeah, no, it's been a really good positive journey uh, to date. Um, I've had one negative experience with a male senator telling me I was a token seat. I understand and I'm very aware that. I got a nomination. I'm very aware of that. And in that perspective, people can look at it as um, a, a token seat. Uh, however, I worked really, really hard February and March, went around to county councillors, worked really hard for the seat and um, missed out narrowly what you said uh, 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 in the end, you know, but I missed out to a woman which I don't feel it was all lost to that point. And I was delighted to get the nomination because for me, it's not even, it's not actually about politics, politics and playing a political game as we've been seeing going on lately where right now the doll is actually like a little bit about political football, if you want, you know, um, while people are living homeless on our streets um, women not getting equal access to domestic violence services. And to me, there's a big, uh, there's a big, 
a football match going on and, 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 and to me that's all really inappropriate where we should be here to address the real issues around um, people's jobs right now, uh, working class people, uh, young people in school, uh, um, distress people's mental health, people's well-being, um, homeless uh, accommodation, people who, who hasn't got a home to call, even a safe house over their head, you know, a safe roof over their head, excuse me. But also there's big, big issues in the middle of a pandemic and it's not about what party gets what over who do you know and uh, just following on from that how uh, do you feel that there are people in the Oireachtas in the in the in the Shannon and the Dáil that you can work with do you do you feel that there are groups of people or individuals in there that that you can work with that you do get some support from Yes, uh, yes, I get uh, I get a lot of support from the Independence for Change. I get a lot of support from people before profit. I get support from uh, some of the Fianna followers to be fair. And I do also get a lot of support from Sinn Féin as well, people who are willing to talk, you know. And, and to me, like, we all, I, I would actually see myself as a radical left per, uh, politician, you know. And for me, it's about rocking the boat while staying in the boat you know, and around getting negotiations around the table and stuff like that. While I've heard in the past one um, socialist politician, well, she used to be a socialist politician here and their actress, she's no longer here, saying that she wouldn't sit around tables, she wouldn't waste her time sitting around tables. And for me, that's very disheartening, you know. We have to encourage people to sit together and to come up and see what a common goal could be. Like there's Breed Smith. I spoke with Breed Smith after I was speaking to, to this person and Breed Smith said to me, no, you have to sit around these tables, Eileen. And she's right, I, I believe you. You have to sit around tables to get outcomes because if you don't sit around uh, these tables, your voice is not being heard. And uh, obviously, uh, some of us would know you as uh, as a campaigner, as an activist for many, many years uh, around a lo load of different issues. And uh, I suppose, uh, as someone from the travelling community, um, you talked about hate crime legislation. And do you feel, I suppose, that, that uh, anti-traveller racism is, is something that is still happening in Ireland and that it's uh, in many ways an acceptable form of racism? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, Maddie, we're not going to see a revolution that we all want in the next, even in the next five to ten years. There's nothing in place that protects people from ethnic minority groups. There's no uh, hate crime legislation that when a Muslim woman gets bet at and hate me, which is one of the stories that's very close to my heart. One of my friends were telling me she got spat at and hate me, Brudge, um, a few years ago. And that's something I'll always hold with me. Why are we allowing this? You know, me, myself, I was a victim of a hate crime. And, and the site, me and a lot of my family were, when I, I, um, um, a sergeant from Bally Farmers uh, Garda Station said, uh, obvious package gruffy knackers that was his words to me and I tried my very best to get a hate crime uh, case against them it was the guards investigating the guards and fortunately it went nowhere you know and uh, so that's my reason for being passionate about a uh, hate crime and I don't want a hate crime uh, legislation that you know that just prosecutes people I want a hate crime legislation that will hold, say, authorities to account that are hateful towards uh, people from ethnic minority groups, like that one instance that I had myself with a with a with a member of of, of the Gardaí in in Valley Farm, you know, uh, that was in 2017, um, December 2017, and and again, these all stay with you. You know, like sometimes it can be the person that you're walking down the street uh, and, and, and that person attacks you because of who you are, because of the colour of your skin. But when it's authorities as well, that's also doing it, it. It's not acceptable. We do have a hate crime act that has never worked. Not one person in Ireland has never been prosecuted for uh, committing a hate crime. We see houses being vandalised all of the time because there's black people living in the house, because there's uh, Roma people, um, Muslim people, um, traveller people. And this is not acceptable.
This is not acceptable. So we need a, a legislation that protects everybody. Absolutely. And you were talking there about uh, state authorities and uh, it, it got me thinking about an article I read uh, the other week about how most uh, local authorities in Ireland haven't drawn down any funding for uh, traveller specific accommodation uh, the last year and it's very concerning that this is still happening that there is money available uh, from the state for uh, for traveller specific accommodation and that it's not being drawn down by the councils and I know I sit on South Dublin County Council I've raised this numerous times and uh, there is no will, to be honest, from the mainstream Fianna Fáil, Fianna Gael, uh, councillors to to proceed uh, with travel accommodation. So, uh, would you what do you think of that situation at the moment? I firstly would like to say, including yourself and the likes of Anthony Flynn, um, there's brilliant uh, uh, councillors in, in in Ireland that do support traveller accommodation, and that will stand up for traveller accommodation. However, they're not an uh, 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 Mullen and there's so many uh, that I could name out. Uh, Melissa, uh, you uh, in, in Dunleary Rathdown, there's so many great uh, county councillors I could name here. Uh, but to name a few of those uh, brilliant people, to say to you, Maddie, that local authorities should be ashamed of themselves. Because you know why we're seeing this again now. If we go back and research from 2012, if we go back and research 2008, we will see many years that the uh, local authorities hasn't uh, hasn't drawn down that money for traveller accommodation. And I think local authorities are the most like you know it's state discrimination. It's 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 that level of discrimination at its best, and it shouldn't be acceptable. Next week, I uh, well not. I like uh, next week uh, that, a few weeks ago I put a motion forward at PMP and basically it was to have a four minute debate with the minister right and I twisted that and I was able to get a two hour debate with the minister and this is me really putting this banner in the water because all of the senators are going to have to talk about um traveller accommodation mm -hmm. so we'll see where the house stands and traveller accommodation next tuesday uh, in the afternoon i'm sure it's after two o'clock and i'll be asking those kind of questions why isn't the redevelopment going ahead in labry park what's the excuse around it they're saying it's flooding it's not flooding labry park is the oldest hot and, uh, oldest uh, official hot and site in Ireland and um, you know I've including myself I as you said I was an activist long before and I still am an activist actually I'm, a, I'm always going to be an activist before I'm I'm a senator and me getting this seat was part of me activism was part of getting this seat was breaking down the barrier uh, to be honest with you uh, Maddie is again you know they didn't draw down 12 million 13 million euro and they're not held to account so who's going back and who's holding them to account? And unfortunately, unfortunately, the wider society thinks that us, the traveller community, are getting millions of euros from the state around accommodation. <coughs> We're not. And some of those council houses that we live in are actually shit. Excuse me language, but they are. These houses are appalling. You know, from being bought and reared in a local authority house myself. My sister have a, 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 um, um, very bad lung problems. My mother died at 48 years of age. And personally, I'm putting that down to accommodation. She's very bad accommodation. Uh, maintenance work is not... Uh, it's not standard maintenance work that you would see getting done in another estate. Uh, actually, this morning I was speaking to a taxi driver coming in and he was telling me about Bally Farm as a whole and working class areas as a whole, how they're not looked after by local authorities. Now, look, we need, we really need to put our foot down because if we look, there's thousands and thousands of people on our streets. There's thousands of people not having a safe uh, home are not even having a place to call home. And this all needs to change. When we look back in 2016, the time of, of, of Apollo House, December, it was a great action at the time. But what has changed, except the numbers has got bigger in, in the homeless uh, sector in Ireland. And it, it, it's a shame, it's, 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 it's beyond sad. And while it's good giving somebody who's homeless a fiver, but that fibre is not going to get them very far. 
You know, these people need a home. They they need a safe place that they that, that they can be safe and call home, obviously. But also, um, Maddie, just to say, like even the suicide or not suicide, sorry. Even if we look at the deaths on our streets, uh, around like people who are homeless over the last number of months, they're not even being reported. They're not even being brought to national media. And I do know that the traveller community are nine times more likely to be homeless than the general population. And that is not taking anything away from the general population. Uh, you know, it's just, it, though these figures are very, very scary uh, that uh, so many traveller people are, are homeless in 21st century Ireland and so many uh, working class people are homeless as well. You know, as I always say to my uh, my family is, you walk down this, the street, of the, uh, in the, go into the inner city, and you see the finest, best looking men and women that came from good families on the streets. That had, may not have nothing to do with addiction, you know, that are just ended up in a, in a bad place. And any of us are only uh, uh, two paychecks away from being homeless. So I think it's a major issue for my community, but also for the general population. And next week we will be debating uh, traveller uh, accommodation and holding the local authorities to account. Yeah. Thanks, Eileen. That's that's really good, and it's good to hear. And we'll post it some updates after that debate as well, uh, to let people know what happens. Because I think it's important that people uh, are are being told about these discussions because often. Uh, I think they're not talked about, you know, in, in the general population and by the media. So we need to get those things out there. So um, thanks, Eileen, so much for talking uh, to me today. Uh, it's, it's been great to have you on here and uh, to get the message out there. Uh, and thank you for all the work that you're uh, doing, both as an activist and now, and, and now as a senator. Uh, I think we all appreciate all the hard work that you do. And, and just to say, I'm an activist uh, senator. <laughs> 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 Like, you know, it's it's been a bit overwhelming for me lately, you know, that kind of way. I've lost uh, contact with a lot of people and it's just been so tough, you know, with the with the acts and stuff like that. But to date I'm I'm I have a very privileged uh, job and I could be here for a very short period of time. Nobody knows when the government is going to collapse. And basically it's around trying to um, really uh, action because the, the, what I hate and hate is a very strong word is when politicians will say they're doing A, B, C and D and end up doing fuck all, you know, so I don't want to be one of those, I want to be here and focus on my uh, work that I, that I want, that, that I come in here to do, so yeah, yeah. That's brilliant, that's brilliant, thank you so much Eileen. And uh, I'll talk to you soon, thanks a million. <laughs>